All right, guys, today we're going to talk about custom knives and should you buy one. And I'm going to try to convince you as to why custom knives are actually pretty cool. Now, I did a video. Um, now, I did a video not too long ago talking about should you invest in knives, and the core of that conversation ultimately kind of boils down to, you know, I don't think you should necessarily invest in knives to try to hold, like, money in an asset to flip. Um, there's definitely a lot of reasons why you shouldn't do that, but at the core, I do think there are some good reasons as to why you should buy a custom knife, and there's definitely a lot of reasons to go for mid-techs and full production knives, but customs definitely have a unique category. I kind of want to do this video to build upon like why I bought a custom knife. Um, there's definitely a lot to it, so let's jump into it. So I think first off and foremost for me when it comes down to why you should buy a custom knife, the biggest reason I think is the ever increasing price of mid techs and what i mean by mid techs are things a lot like this hinderer xm18 where it is a knife that has some degree of custom fit and finish but is still namely or largely machine made so that means that there are parts of the manufacturing process with this xm18 that are done by hand and parts of it that are done by machine in addition to some people consider some um of the Chinese made blades to be mid techs. I'm really not sure about that because once again, a mid tech is a blend of custom hand finishing with um, machine machined steps, I guess I should say. So yeah, that is essentially what a mid tech is. But as we can clearly see going into 2023, mid techs are drastically increasing in price. And we've even seen this in 2022 with things like the Spider Coast Stovepipe, uh, but now with things like the Benchmade Narrows um, and many other of that really like mid tech kind of line where you just see blades that are still once again, a mixture of machine made and hand finished going for incredibly high prices. We can even see this with or we can even see this with companies like Hinderer, like the XM18, and companies like Chris Reeve knives with their Sabenzas, and even Strider with their SNGs and such. You know, like these knives are honestly going for, you know, seven hundred ish dollars. And that is while not quite can buy like any custom knife for that price point you're definitely getting into the realm of customs i mean this is a full custom gavco and it's about a thousand dollars so while there is still like a three hundred dollar difference there realistically speaking when you're already spending seven hundred dollars going the extra mile isn't as far as saying going from 200 to 600 you know um, that is a bit more of a jump at least percentage wise so that is the biggest reason for me and i think that the first reason is mid techs are so expensive uh, or are getting more expensive i should say now secondly for me now secondly um the next point i would say really is that you get to support makers and this is something to an extent that you get to do with mid techs but by and large when it comes down to mid techs um, you're usually going to be supporting a larger company like benchmade like spider co who are using some of their manufacturing steps to support a maker we can even see this with people like avco and we with the hyphen which is a i think most people consider mid tech even though i don't really but you know you support the maker gavco but you're still getting a production knife and so when you go over to customs you are solely like say you spend let's just say 700 dollars on a mid tech versus a custom well the mid tech you boil down you boil down and some of that money ends up getting back to the maker whereas if you buy a full custom all of that money goes to the maker now yes it is true some of it goes to taxes some of it goes into material costs but all of that money is being directly given to the maker and that is something that i really like because if you genuinely like the person who makes a particular design of a knife then it is really one of the best ways to show your appreciation for that person by one of their custom knives because then all of that money goes directly to them now, i'm not saying if you can't afford a custom obviously you 
can't afford a custom. So I'm not saying that those who can't, you know, are just nothing. You know, support the makers whenever and however you can, but this really is the best way to support them, buy a custom piece. Now, aside from that, you know, there are or may be designs, I think oftentimes of the Blackwood Skirmish, that uh, even though there was a semi-production or production model of the Blackwood Skirmish through Benchmade produced, you know, there's nothing like actually being able to get a full custom and there may be some models that you're unable to get through buying something like a mid-tech or a full production blade um, obviously there are different models that um, you just can't get unless you do go with customs now i think the last point for me and the biggest reason why i love custom blades is if you're one of those people that really loves the mechanics really loves the tactile features and just the overall like geometry and nature of how blades and tools are made that is the biggest reason to buy a custom because uh, for me and as you will well see with something like a full custom like this Gavco, everything is so hand finished, hand done and the tolerances are usually incredibly tight. And even if they aren't necessarily like fitment, you'll just notice with things like, uh, for instance, how this handle and blade interface right here, they are near parallel. Like this blade is just ever so slightly recessed into the handle. And because of things like quality control, that will never be able to be replicated with production knives you just when knives are being made by even the tens but the hundreds or thousands they are not going to make blades that have super super tight or close fitment or tolerances because you can't have as much control or there will always be a little bit more slop in production uh, machinery and how things go together as far as fitment goes so when you have a full custom everything is done by hand or at least with machines that someone uses by hand to make that blade come together and therefore there is going to be a lot more hand fitment and everything will have a lot more tight tighter tolerances. This is similar to why people prefer to buy custom 1911s over full production 1911s, right? A Rock Island Armory 1911 is going to be a largely machine-made handgun, so therefore the tolerances will be looser, um, and ultimately it's not going to be made to the same specifications. Um, at the core whereas if you go and you buy a you know let's say Wilson combat where there's a lot more hand finishing to it it's going to be a lot tighter finer working machine now that may or may not impact the you know durability or resiliency of that handgun in adverse conditions but it does mean a lot to people who like myself really appreciate the knit the nitty gritty fine details of a machine as a core or a tool um, and so ultimately that is one of the biggest reasons why I prefer handmade customs is you really just get that level of tolerance that you cannot achieve out of mid techs or productions and ultimately too like I said you just get a level of finish that is done by hand like this is very hard to replicate with machinery so oftentimes companies aren't going to invest in you know even doing stuff like inside an opening hole right to texture it and does it serve much practical feature or does it really serve much practical purpose to have this machined or you know like um, textured in the way that it does not particularly does this handle really serve that much more uh, you know does it give you much more grip by having all of these textures in it cut into it not really but the fact that it is there just makes it really pan finish and fit on these guys really does make them quite unique and once again very mechanically intriguing and nice and once again if you do have the money and the desire for getting a custom i definitely would encourage it once again one if you have the money and the desire and it also is worth noting too that if you do get into a custom knife be very realistic with your expectations once again the law of diminishing gains as i talked about in my previous video on this custom knife is definitely there like on paper you know this xm18 is going to be potentially a higher performer if not definitely adequately equal to the performance that you would receive out of a knife close to twice its price so understand that when it comes to 
um, custom knives, there's oftentimes not any clear tangible paper benefits, so to speak, or like uh, on paper or spec sheet benefits to a full custom knife. It's a lot of intangible things or once again, very small, very minute details that a full production or mid-tech knife will not feature. So do understand if you do have the financial means or desire to end up with a full custom, you know, set your expectations realistically. Know that, you know, what you're getting isn't necessarily going to be, you know, 10 times better better than a $100 knife, or I should say buying a $1,000 knife isn't going to be 10 times better than buying a $100 knife. It's just going to have small improvements, features, and once again, there will be some degree of intangible um, benefits or buying a knife that's a custom, that's expensive because you truly want that design like that maker or other such factors. So it's important to note those things before getting a custom knife set your expectations realistically but if you are in the market i definitely think they're worth it obviously i have one in my collection and i will probably add more custom knives in the future anyways guys as always god bless and i'm out